Hello, welcome back to my tech farm. A few months ago I installed linear rails on NS3 V2, but uh, only on the Y and the Z axis. The kit I got from the Banggood, actually it was originally designed for NS3 Pro, so it needed some small hack. On the Y axis the limit switch presser. And actually the kit includes uh, linear rails for all three axes, but the X is not installed so far, because here I have the MicroSys Direct Rail Studer. And I really like this extruder for printing TPU filaments because of its open structure and immediately I can see if there is any problem or I have to place more tension on it or similar. And then now in the meantime I got from the MicroSys the NG Direct Drive Extruder. Uh, what uh, we have to know about this extruder is that it is designed to be mounted on the linear rails and uh, it has the gear ratio of 3 to 1, this means it can provide more torque and also the distance between pulley and the hot end is much smaller which will result more accurate retraction and actually this is great for printing with the flexible filaments. Interesting to see that this extruder is approximately 2 years old. It still works good but I can see that uh, these pulleys are not in the best shape so it is good that I will replace them soon. Let's see what's in the box. Cables and bolts for the wiring, this is the hot end with the silicone sock and nozzle and uh, some zip ties, again some bolts and spare hardware. Now let's see the extruder. This is a smaller stepper motor and uh, here I can mount it to the linear rails and it also includes this fan shroud. I'm not sure what is the material of this fan shroud. I want to check because I want to use this sometimes inside the enclosure. I hope it's not PLA. And I wanted to show you a little bit what is inside, it's a little bit hard to see the gears and the pulley, so it is not so open like the previous version. And with this bolt I can place some tension or reduce the tension on the filament. And with this I can release the tension if I want to insert the filament. So the pulley is approximately here and here will be the hot end, so extremely small distance between the pulleys and the hot end. And now we start with the installation, don't forget to remove the filament first, uh, turn off the printer when it cools down and remove the power cable. On this printer I'm using the CR touch, but of course there are different auto leveling sensors, so on this bracket we don't have the holder for any, we have to print it ourselves, depend which type we have. And uh, I printed this one, which is a special design for the CR touch, and the link you can find on MicroSys website. I will start with installing of the linear rail on x-axis, but of course I have to remove this extruder first. But uh, I want to mention that maybe you notice that my wires are on the front side. You can check the video when I inst install this direct drive extruder. I had problem when the z-axis is on the, the top. Uh, there is no space for the cables to go on the back side. Now with the different position of the motor and uh, different size, this problem will be solved so that my cables can go to the back side again. One of the main reasons why I don't like these V-slot wheels. The dust from the wearing. Start with losing and removing the belt. And then you can use the open-end wrench on one side and Allen key from the other side and then you can take off the extruder. Don't forget these plastic holders are here to prevent this moving part to fall down because uh, it will be very hard to place it back, those balls may fall out or something like that. So I will remove it but I have to be very careful now. I use approximately every second or third hole. I am pressing the linear rail to one side because I want this to be parallel. Don't forget that you can still push the carriage over the edge so the balls might fall out so be careful with this. Now actually on the pictures I can see there is some kind of limiter which I can screw here so it prevents from the falling down but I cannot see it in my package. And now I want to explain my next step. So as you can see the timing belt is here in this slot and this is the good position for it. But the limit switch is not good, it is aligned now with the linear rail and it cannot be pressed. So that's why I need a longer bolt here which will make the belt to stay in a same position, I mean the pulley, but the limit switch will be a little bit outer. And I have to use these distancers too. And these are new longer bolts which were included in the kit. Now I'm removing the fan shroud, it's called with two bolts, this is the first one. And this is the second one. 
And now removing this adapter plate, it is holded with three bolts. One, two, and three. The bats will go here. Installing the adapter plate to the carriage using four of these countersunk bolts. And on this side it is safe and it also press the limit switch, but on the other side don't forget it will still fall down. Installing the belts into these channels. And placing a tension on them. Installing back the extruder main body using the same three bolts I removed previously. Don't forget these are M3 bolts, so don't over tight them. Actually I should do this much earlier, I have to remove all the wires from the previous extruder. And also I have to remove the CA touch too. And these are still the original fans from NDS3 V2. And of course I have to remove the fence too, and now you can see here that uh, Y printer needs a maintenance from time to time. Now you have to be very careful with these two wires here. So this is for the heater cartridge, I will just lose these two bolts. And I should pull out the heater cartridge, if not then I have to press it from this side. Okay, it doesn't come out easily. It's out. And extremely careful you have to be with this wire. This is the thermistor. And this bolt shouldn't be tight. And when you're installing it on a new heater, the same method you have to use. Here it is. <laughs> I'm going to miss it because this is a great piece of engineering. I put a lot of hours in it. And small detail I noticed later. LDOMotors.com, so LDO stepper motors we have with this kit. And now it's time to prepare a new hot end and a nozzle, but first I will use the opportunity to clean everything and put some lubricant on these linear rails. Now this was preassembled in a factory, but if you do this yourself, first you have to tie the heat brake to the heat block. And then to uh, tie the nozzle, which has to align to the heat brake and not to the heat block. You should see some small gap here. And later, when it is in the hot end, of course, in the printer, you have to preheat it to 220 degrees Celsius, and only then uh, using some open end wrench on the heat block and tie the nozzle with approximately 3.4 newton meter torque. I think this is a nickel plated brass nozzle, so don't use this with uh, very hard and abrasive materials like carbon fibers. For that you can buy the hardened or stainless steel nozzle from the MicroSys. Push the heat brake into the extruder and make sure it is on completely on the top and then tie this small set screw. But be very careful, don't over tie this, this is very small. The thermistor hole has to be from the right side. The heating cartridge goes into this bigger hole and the thermistor in the smaller one, it will be holded the wires with the, this hole here and be very careful when you are tightening these wires. So pay attention that the thermistor is inside that uh, bottom hole and don't over tight this bolt. And now tightening these two set screws from the bottom to hold the cartridge in the place. Okay. Placing back the silicon sock. It's much easier to do it now, <laughs> when it is cold. And now attaching the fans, the hot end fan with these bigger screws, and the part cooling fan with the smaller ones. So this is the position for the hot end fan. The wires goes here. These are self-tapping screws, so don't over tie them. And this is part cooling XCL fan, and its air will be actually split to two sides. And I will attach it with these smaller screws. And now it goes back to the extruder attached with those two screws which I removed earlier. And now the CA touch installation. This is the bracket and it will go in this position. 
And I noticed that these holes uh, are a little bit smaller than 3mm, so properly they are designed to be self-taped, but I don't trust to this kind of solution, so I will extend them to be bigger than 3mm, and I will use the washer and the nut on the other side. First I will install the bracket, and here I will use this countersunk bolt, so the head is not in the way of the sear touch. Now I see why they suggest to use the threaded holes, because it is very hard to insert the nut now from the other side, but I have to do it maybe off the camera, but it will be there. <laughs> I think this was the hardest part of the assembling. And just ensure that the nozzle is lower than the probe of the sear touch. Okay. When it goes out, then it will be lower than the nozzle. This is just 70mm Teflon tube, guide for the filament. Pressing in and then pull this locker up and inserting the clip on the other side. And now the stepper motor cable. Now if, even if the original would be long enough, I have to use the provided one because the LDO stepper motor has different pinout. Maybe you can see in the camera two middle uh, wires are crossed. Some cable management using provided zip ties. Check if this part is long enough and then you can use one zip tie here on this part. And I still worry a lot that this may fall down. So definitely I will print now some kind of limiter and screw it here. Well I don't want to leave it as it is now but I want to finish this video and the fastest method is actually cutting uh, this piece. I have the aluminum profile 20 by 5 millimeters, but you can see the print one doesn't matter. Much better now. According to instruction, next step is to set the tension on the filament by rotating this knob. And a good start point is 1.75 mm between this aluminum arm and the brass knob. This means we can use the filament as a guide. Okay, this will be my start point and then later I will modify it. For example, for TP you want to lose this knob a little bit. The hardware installation is finished, so two important things has to be done, and one of them is to change the E steps because this extruder has the gear ratio 3 to 1, and this means that this stepper motor has to rotate more for the same length of the filament. And easiest way to do this is to download the G code from the Microsys uh, website and uh, copy it to the SD card and just execute it like you would print some object, and the E steps should be changed. One more important thing I have to do is to check the Z offset because now the relative position of the nozzle and the sear touch pin is changed. I'm starting with the homing and then I will use the paper friction method to set the correct Z offset. To be careful I'm raising the Z offset so going closer to the zero. And then I will lower it according to the friction. Going to zero Z coordinate. My previous Z offset was minus 2.05, now it is minus 1.12. Save and it's ready for printing. I can see both fans are working and I am preheating now to insert the filament. And good first object for the test print is a calibration cube and I will suggest you to use this one which can be used later as a D6 dice. And it is very important to change the retraction to 1 mm. I noticed that it is a little bit harder to insert the filament compared to the previous extruder. Not sure, maybe it just needs some practicing, but again I have to play with the direction of that 45 degree angle cutting on the end of the filament. I'll check the dimensions later, but actually here you can see the numbers. So quick conclusions. Well, uh, recently a company contacted me to explain them why I better like the linear rods or rails compared to the Vistot wheels. My list was very long and here you can see part of it. If you just look all those premium printers, none of them will use Vistot wheels. And I believe the Vistot wheels don't have too big future in this clipperizing and bigger speeds and similar. About the extruder, uh, I really like even the previous version. 
uh, but I really had the problems with the position of the cable so they had to go from the front side. Here it, everything is much better, we have the 3 to 1 ratio so the uh, stepper motor is uh, smaller and lighter with this. Uh, one thing I don't like uh, with this extruder that now I don't have that view to the pulleys compared to the previous version where it was uh, much higher and I could see it. So I, only this part I'm missing but definitely so far I'm very satisfied with this new extruder and uh, it will be a big test, uh, some TPU filaments I got for testing and uh, I hope you will follow me to that video too. Thank you for watching and happy printing!